Good morning, everyone. Meteorologist Jim Dickey here in the ABC 7 Hurricane Center. It is September 10th, the historic peak of activity in the Atlantic during a given hurricane season. This hurricane season 2018, uh, not disappointing as far as activity out there. Take a look. This is uh, the satellite imagery as of Monday morning. Three hurricanes, now major hurricane Florence, Hurricane Isaac and strengthening Hurricane Helene, stretching from the Central Atlantic back to the coast of Africa. Let me start with Helene quickly because, in all likelihood, this is going to be a fish storm. Of course, we'll watch it as we watch all tropical systems, but when you see a cone of concern going due north like that for the NHC, uh, you know uh, the chances are this is not going to be a problem for anyone. It is going to reach major hurricane strength. There's that official forecast, 115 mile per hour winds by this evening, uh, but again, making that hard turn, staying well to the east of Bermuda. You see that on the west of your screen, well to the east of the island. So Helene should not be much of a problem. And I wish I could say that Florence was going to make a similar turn, uh, but that scenario is just about out the window at this point in time. And as of the 11 a.m. advisory on Monday, Florence is once again a major hurricane, 115 mile per hour winds, rapid intensification going on now. So this strengthening likely to continue as we go forward through the day. This is a closer view, a zoomed in uh, view of the GO satellite imagery. Notice the eye on the last uh, frame of this lapse. It is now a perfect concentric circle. When you look at the core of the system, it has wrapped a very well-defined tight eye wall around that center. And again, all signs that rapid intensification is underway. So 115 now. Don't be surprised to see those winds continue to jump and perhaps by even a fairly wide margin over the next 24 hours. Now, in my last update, back on Friday, still showing the potential that perhaps this blocking high didn't set up and there is a window that Florence could hit and swing out to sea. All indications are that blocking high locks in and does not allow Florence to escape, rather steers it right towards the coast of the United States. Uh, as of now, it's still headed to the due west. And something to watch for today in the next 24 hours is when that northerly turn starts, because I think that's going to have implications down the road exactly where the landfall occurs. Right now, the window of movement, though, again, there is no escape route for Florence going forward. Uh, it is pretty much at this point locked in that we're going to have a landfall later on this week uh, somewhere from the Carolina, uh, South Carolina-Georgia border north to the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. Now, a couple things to note with that cone of concern. First things first, don't focus on where the center of that line goes. The cone of concern marks the uh, average forecast error in any point in time as the NHC looks back over their forecast, which actually has narrowed this year. It's kind of crazy to see the cone that narrow, but don't focus on the center line because history and statistics tell us that by the time we get to late Thursday night, early Friday morning as Florence is making landfall, it could be anywhere on either side of that cone, from Charleston to Cape Hatteras, perhaps even further north from there when you get further out in time. Now that's where the center is anyway, and also of note, the impacts with this storm are going to be wide-reaching, well outside of where this cone is, especially as, as it concerns terrain. Because also note, you have 8 a.m. Thursday offshore. You then have 8 a.m. Friday. It hasn't moved all that much. And then 8 a.m. Saturday has barely moved too. All indications are, as this comes on shore, it's going to more or less stall. Hit the brakes, stall out. Not entirely unlike what Harvey did last year in Texas. And when I now put on the GFS model, and I don't want you to focus on where it's showing these numbers because it's too far out for this model to be very good at that. But note that bullseye over the Outer Banks, 34 inches of rain. This is saying the ingredients are in place for a historic flooding rain event. So I think when it comes down to it, Florence is going to bring every impact a hurricane, a landfalling hurricane can bring. There will be dangerous and deadly storm surge on the northern and eastern side of Florence as it moves on shore. So we'll be watching in particular for that Wilmington northward. There will be very powerful winds. This could be a Cat 4 hurricane at landfall. That's what the NHC's official forecast calls for right now. And I think the more widespread and increasing concern with Florence is flooding and not just for the coast, but well inland, even into central North Carolina, central and eastern Virginia, wide area 
10 to 20 inches of rain and some spots could see 30 to 40. I don't think that's out of the question. So flooding is going to be a major problem with this, something we'll be watching and something that even if you're not by the coast in the Carolinas and Virginia, you need to start to be thinking about now. Are you in a low-lying area? Are you in a floodplain? Uh, in that case, you're going to want to start to think about things you can do as this storm approaches uh, to put yourself in a safer situation. Let's switch gears and talk about Isaac. Not nearly as healthy looking uh, on satellite this morning, thankfully. Off to the east, you can see Helene. That has the very well-defined eye. Isaac is just a sort of blob of thunderstorms. It's called Central Dense Overcast. There's the center in there, but it's tough to pick out where it is. And it looks like it's being hit by some wind shear at this point in time. Uh, so not the healthiest looking hurricane, but a hurricane all the same. Here are your model plots. And note how wacky everything sort of gets as we get out in time, especially as a few of these bring it towards Hispaniola. Now, a few do peel it off, turn it to the north, uh, but for the most part, the models keep this on a westerly path. Now, when you see towards the end very wild swings in the path in the models, and you see that disparity, what this says to me is a number of these models are showing Isaac falling apart. And as to why, Florence, come the weekend, will still be spinning up by the Carolinas, there's also going to be an upper level trough, a dip in the jet stream setting up over the uh, central Atlantic, and that is going to bring some northerly wind shear into play, which again, in all likelihood, will weaken, if not uh, force Isaac to completely fall apart. The storm I'm thinking about with Isaac is, uh, what was at the time, Tropical Storm Erica. Worked into the Caribbean. Uh, there was some wind shear involved, but at a point, there was even the Kona Concern placed to South Florida. Uh, but it fell apart south of Hispaniola. I think Isaac faces a very tough road ahead to stay together to strengthen and survive the Caribbean. But history also tells us when storms are this far south this time of year, the chances are there that this could impact uh, the Gulf, it gets into the Gulf uh, or Florida. So that's why we're going to, to, again, be keeping a very close eye on this storm as we go forward in time. There's the official forecast calling for that weakening like I, talk about, uh, like I talked about once it gets into the Caribbean Friday and into the weekend. And if that wasn't enough for you, there's a couple other areas to watch too. That trough I talked about in the central Atlantic, you can sort of see the enhancement showing up. Oh, let me go back to that. I thought it was a lapse. It's not. You can see uh, the area on satellite with the oranges and the reds in the northern Atlantic to the north of that area I've highlighted. Could see something spin up there. There's also a tropical wave. You can see some healthy thunderstorm activity right now in the Western Caribbean as that works into the Gulf of Mexico. 40% chance we could see development there. So there's a non-zero chance we could have five tropical cyclones, which of course includes depressions, tropical storms, hurricanes, five in the Atlantic at one given time. Active at this peak of hurricane season, like I said. All right, Florence. Landfall likely now, later this week. The Carolinas seem to be in the crosshairs, but again, there's still some uncertainty exactly where that landfall occurs, and it's not going to matter all that much. It will for where the strongest winds are, but there's going to be wide-reaching impacts from Florence. Flooding becoming an increasing concern. Inland flooding included in that storm surge in the northern and eastern side, and yes, the strong hurricane winds as well, which will also cause major damage. So this is setting up as an absolute disaster uh, going forward here over this week. Preparations underway need to continue. Uh, if you're in the cone, prepare for landfall. Uh, a tough road ahead for Isaac, meaning I don't suspect uh, this will be having impacts on the United States. It's something we'll be watching, but in all likelihood, shear is going to help to tear it apart as it works to the Caribbean. All of that we will continue to track closely here at ABC7 as we go through the next couple of days. I'll be back with an update on uh, Florence and Isaac uh, on Wednesday with another video blog. Until then, I'm meteorologist Jim Dickey. Have a good one.